Turn with us over in the book of Mark in the 10th chapter. So good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you uh, for who you are most of all. We thank you, Father, for the privilege and honor to be able to be here with you and our brothers and sisters, Lord, that love you. And Father, just speak to our hearts today, Father, in this service or those may be listening by CD or video, Lord, we we know that you love them as well. And Father, we just love you so much for all your wonderful blessings upon us. And uh, we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Mark's Gospel, the 10th chapter, verse number 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Then he said, Thou knowest the commandments. Thou do not commit adultery, do not kill or murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness or do not lie, defraud not or honor thy father and thy mother. So he's telling him, you know, the commandments, the 10 big, big ones. Of course, there's other things in the Word of God, but the big 10 of the Moses commandments there, we all know the 10 commandments. So let's just stop right here and just kind of look at them just for a moment just before we move on here this morning. Remember, it's going to the flea market one time in video and people walking around and asked them, said, are you a good person? And they'd naturally say, yeah. And said, well, you know, there's a test that you can take and see if you're a good person. Said, can you name any of the Ten Commandments? Of course, they always use the name the big three. Thou shalt not lie, shall not steal, don't commit adultery. And I said, okay, let's take a look at them. Said, have you ever told a lie? It doesn't matter how big a lie it is. Have you ever told a lie? I said, well, yes. Yeah. said, well, what does that make you? They said, a human. I said, what if I told a lie? What it would make me? He said, a liar, <laughs> you know. So I ask you this morning, have you ever told a lie? And if your answer is yes, and we move on to the next one, and said, have you ever stole anything? Remember, you've already said you're a liar. So have you ever stole anything? Doesn't matter the value, have you ever stole anything? And they answer, well, yes. Say, what does it make you? It makes you a thief. Said, have you ever committed adultery? Now, now, in the Old Testament, you had to actually get in the bed with someone and to physically commit adultery. But Jesus said, but I say unto you, in Mark's Gospel, the fifth, uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter, he said, but I say unto you, whosoever looks with lust in your heart has committed adultery already. And said, have you ever looked with lust in your heart? And said, well, I guess so. Then by your own admission, you're lying, thieving, adultery heart. If God judges us by the Ten Commandments, would you be guilty or innocent? Well, I guess I'd be guilty. Would you go to heaven or hell? I guess I'd go to hell. See, in just a few short words, we have people at the gate of hell and hadn't really offended them by their own admission. And we was all once at the gate of hell. Amen? Because we all was lost at one time, was it not? Then you say if you was in a courtroom and, and, and the judge is about to pass sentence on you and you're found guilty and is about to pass sentence and said your fine is $50,000 and you didn't have two nickels rubbed together and all of a sudden the door cracks open and a man walks in and says, I want to pay his fine. He said, how would you feel at that Toward that fella. So I'd feel pretty, pretty good about that fella coming in and doing that. Well, I said, that's what Jesus did for me and you. When we was not able to pay the fine, Jesus took our place on that cross and he paid the price for me and you. Amen? So if, if you had never got forgiveness of your sin, you're in the right place this morning. Amen? I have good news for you. Amen? We go on with the story here in Mark in the... 10th chapter, verse 20. And the young man answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Jesus loved him. 
and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. Verse 22, it says that he was sad at the seeing, and he went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Those, Jesus understood those possessions was his God. You see, in this world, we put our, lay up our treasures upon earth where rust and moth will come in, and we, we allow things to take charge of our lives and become our owners rather than we owning them. We're just passing through this world, my friend. Naked, we came into this world. He said, we brought nothing in this world. Corinthians uh, and said, it is certain we shall carry nothing out. So we understand that we need God is our treasure. Jesus said in verse 23, Jesus looked around about and said to his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus is not talking that if you have riches that that and, and, and you're superly blessed uh, that you can't go to heaven. That's not what he's saying. He's saying if you're trusting in those riches to get you there, you're in bad shape this morning. In fact, God's people are to be the most blessed people on the face of the earth, amen? Because he came to Abraham and he said, Abraham, come out from among your people and I want to bless you, make a great nation of you and all the people of the earth to see how much you're blessed. And they'll say, we want to serve the God that Abraham served him. Look how much he's blessed. And so he comes along and Israel messed up and he comes along, Jesus came, came in and he said, uh, uh, I'll build me a church and I'll bless that church so much that all the people of the world will see how blessed them church people are and they say, we're going to serve the God of the church people. Only the church people are no different than Israel. Amen? Are y'all with me? That's a different message, but that's the way it <clears throat> falls in a nutshell. And the disciples were astonished at his words, verse 24. But Jesus answered again and said unto him, Children, how hard is it for them that, here we go, trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. He didn't say it's impossible, but if you're trusting in riches this morning, it is easier, verse 25, for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. The eye of the needle is the sheep gate that they'd carry the sheep in, a little small gate that sheep, and a camel standing up with all the, all the baggage on him that they would carry could not go through there. Even if he got down and humbled himself with all the stuff they would pile on the camels, he couldn't get through. He's got to unload all the burdens and all that junk they're carrying around in the world and humble themselves, get down on their knees, and that camel can get through the eye of the needle, that sheep gate, if you will. Amen. So we understand it's possible, but we got to get rid of those things that distracts us. Are you with me this morning? Are you with me this morning? <clears throat> Amen. God's good to us. Verse 26. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? Who can be saved? Verse 27, and Jesus looking upon them uh, said, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Then Peter began to say unto him, lo, we have left all efforts and followed thee. Peter said, we've, we've left everything that we know. We forsook our nets, our fathers. We've left our families, and we have followed you. And Jesus said in verse 29, that's where we go in this morning. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive, say it. You know what that means? A hundred times. Uh, I'm telling you, it pays to serve the Lord. A hundredfold now on earth, now in this time, houses a hundred times, a hundred times brethren, 
a hundred times sister and mother and children and lands with persecution and in the world to come eternal life. In other words, he's saying all this and heaven too if you'll just serve me. Wow, what a deal. Amen? Amen. How wonderful God is to us. You ask the question this morning. Look, look at the one next to you and just ask them this question. Why are you so blessed? Don't look at me. Look at the one next to you. Right straight in the eye. Why is it that you're so blessed? Now look back at him and say, you are blessed, aren't you? What'd they say? Let me just do a survey. How many here is blessed? And the rest of y'all, y'all get, I think I got 100%. No, I just kid. <laughs> Amen. Let me do, how many is blessed? And you know you're blessed. Some got two hands. I love that. Amen. That's double blessed. I'm blessed. Now look back at them and tell them the reason I'm blessed is because I live for the Lord. <laughs> tell them. Tell them. Look at them. Tell them. I am blessed. Why are you so blessed? Let's talk about that a little bit. Because you gave. That's why you're so blessed. Because you gave up the world. Because you gave up all those things that was distracting you from the Lord. And you put God first in your life. That's why we're blessed this morning. You want to know how, why we're blessed? That's why we're blessed. Amen? We forsook all and followed him. Forsook all. And followed him. How blessed we are. He said in John 3 16. I quoted it a while ago. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. God gave. Did not God gave. God so loved the world. That he what? Gave. God gave. And because he gave. His only begotten son. He begot many sons. So when we give, our giving, my friend, blesses us back. That's what he's talking about. When we give up houses, our friends, uh, when we come to the Lord. And when you do, let me tell you, sometimes you'll lose a lot of your friends when you come to the Lord. Can I get a witness? Because they don't want that life. And that's good. You don't need to hang around that anymore. But when you give up those for the Lord, God gives you a hundred times more good, better friends that's not going to stab you in the back. Amen? Amen? When you give up houses and forfeit things and jobs and careers for God, God blesses you so abundantly. Amen? We can't even contain it. Hallelujah. Because you gave. You gave or you gave up things of this world. How many believe that this morning? I'll prove it to you this morning. Amen? We understand there in, in John, in the fourth chapter, we know the story there of the woman at the well. You know, when she came there to the well, her, her life is represented with the empty bucket she had. You know, she might have thought she had everything, but her bucket was empty. There's people walking around today in this world with an empty bucket. Their life is empty. Their life is miserable. And they're walking around with this empty bucket everywhere they go. And, they can't, and she comes to the well and Jesus is waiting on her. And, she, and Jesus more or less said, if you leave that empty bucket, you can go home with the well. And that's what she did. She left, the Bible says she left her bucket and she went home with the well. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. How blessed God is to bless us. You're wonderful, Father. You're wonderful. No doubt we've gave up and given up a lot of things in this world uh, that was holding us down. But let me tell you, every time we'd give something up, God would multiply it a hundred times back to us in goodness. Amen? We see in Philippians in the fourth chapter, they was giving people. They understood the power of giving. Let me find here where I'm at. Uh, maybe I skipped over scripture. Let me catch it right quick. Luke 14 and 28. For which of you intended to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he has sufficient to finish it? Now, a lot of people starts out with the Lord and go for a little while and they give up and quit. They say, well, it just didn't, it didn't work. <laughs> I, tell them, I tell them like this. I said, look, you spent 
You spent probably 20 or 30 years tying knots in your life and messing up your life. And you come to God and you want a difference by next week. Give him a few weeks anyhow. Come on, untie all them knots you created. Amen? He will. And he, your life will just begin to blossom. When you plant a seed in the ground, you don't go out there the next day with a combine to get corn off of it, do you, Brother Woody? You have to give it a little time, and, but God will do his thing. Uh, and after a while, you can crank that combine up and go out there and gather a crop. Uh, and that's the way it is with God when we'll stay faithful. If we'll count the cost, uh, do I have what it takes to stick in with it, amen? To hold, to endure unto the end. Do I have what it takes? That's what he's saying to us this morning. Amen. He said to Philippians in the fourth chapter, verse 16, Paul said here to the Philippian church, uh, he said, for even in Thessalonica, he said, ye sent, uh, you gave once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, uh, but I desire fruit that may abound unto your account. Paul said, I'm, I'm not here this I'm not sending this for you to send more money to me. I'm just letting you know why you're so blessed. Amen. And when you give, it's added to your account and God multiplies that seed that you sow. Amen. We understand that. You understand, I'm not a money preacher. You might be a visitor this morning and say, oh, he's one of my money preachers. No, he, you got me pegged wrong this morning. Amen. Since day one, this ministry has already always received one offering on Sunday morning. And that's it. Amen. I know Sunday school started taking it up for their literature. That's your own bag back there. You do with it what you want to. But as far as the church functions, uh, one offering on Sunday morning, and that's it. And what you see came through that offering plate. Everything you see on this ground came through that offering plate on Sunday morning. Amen. And I probably can count on my one hand the times I've had to preach on tithe and giving. Amen. And, it, and sometimes when I, I get a message like this, you know, I said, Lord, you sure I need to preach on giving? You know, I mean, you know, they were giving people. And I believe we got the most giving people that come to church here and say, well, well, why do I need to talk? He said, they need to understand why they're so blessed. This is why you're so blessed this morning. How I many believe you're blessed? Yeah. Hallelujah. It's because God blesses you for your giving. That's why you're blessed. Oh, help us, Lord. Verse 18, he says, but I have all and abound. Paul said, I have more than I need. I am full, having received from Ephroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. And he says, because you gave, he said, my God shall supply a double L all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because you gave, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. See, so often we'll quote uh, Philippians 4.19 uh, but we don't catch the scriptures before it uh, and the reason he says my God shall supply all your need is because they gave. Amen. Amen. How many has ever gone to a vending machine? You walk up there and push the buttons? What happens? <laughs> How many times we come to church just push the buttons? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're talking about we got to give every time. I'm talking about what do you put into a service? What do you got to do to that machine? I, I, I reposted on Facebook. There was this the machine there, and all it was was a slot to put dollar bills in. And it says, put a dollar in to see how stupid you are. <laughs> I imagine some people would put a dollar in. <laughs> it just zip. Uh, next, <laughs> zip next, <laughs> zip next. <laughs> but think about it. When you walk up to the machine, what do you got to do first? You got to put something in it to get something out of it. And if you don't put something in it, you ain't going to get nothing out of it. But the more you put in it, sometimes you go to machines, it'll be something for 75 cents. Well, now it's a dollar and a half and something $2 at two twenty-five, two fifty. And so it's according to what you put in it, what you can get out of it. And the service is no different. 
is according to how you come prepared. Amen. How do you prepare the soil? Brother Woody is a farmer and he has to prepare that soil. Amen. Get ready for that seed. Amen. And so we got to prepare ourselves, right? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. We understand. How do we, what do we put into a service? Do we get into it on the edge of our seat and say, amen, brother. He's killing me. He's killing me. But amen. He's stepping all over my toes, but amen. See, when you get quiet, I know I got your number. And I'm going to step on them toes. I'm going to stomp them then. But as long as you amen, and I said, man, I can't get them. They just amen, and they, they go along with it. But when you get all sold up, I know I got your number. Amen. <laughs> you don't want to see it. God loves you, don't you? You get out of anything what you put into it. Amen. That's why he said in Luke 6, 38. What's the first word? Y'all shout it. Give. Give, and it shall be given unto you a hundred times. How's that? Press down, shaking together, running over. Shout, and that next word, that mean thing, just X that out in your Bible. That's added. That's, if you read it, it's, it's in the Strong's Concordance, that's added. It's a 9999 word. It's just added for better readability. Man ain't the one that gives you. Your giving is what gives to you. So it reads like this. Give, and it shall be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall be given unto you. Your giving gives unto you. Amen. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be what measure to you again. Only it's pressed down, shaken together, and running over before it comes back to you a hundred times. That's what he's talking about. Are you with me? Are you with me? God's awesome. You're awesome, Lord. Now let's get to the, let's see, the touchy part here. Malachi. Third chapter, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yea, you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have I robbed thee? He said, in tithe and offerings. You're cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, we think because we don't give, we rob God of that money we're supposed to give or our time or our house or our lands or whatever it is. God's not talking about that. He said, you have robbed me from blessing you. You have robbed me from blessing you. God don't need our money. Amen. What did Jesus tell the disciples when they had to pay the taxes? Go down and catch that fish, get the coin out of his mouth, pay the taxes. I mean, God don't need, God don't, I wish American government, United States government would realize we don't need money, we need God. Amen. Money's not the answer. Money's not the answer. I read in the Bible there with, with famines in the land for three and a half years with, with Elijah and the woman with an empty barrel or the widow's barrel had a handful of meal in there. But because they didn't have any money, and if they had money, there was no food, there was a famine, money would have done no good. But for three and a half years, that barrel never ran out. See, because they had God. Amen? Are you with me? So we understand the robbing part that we're robbing God of is robbing God and tying his hands that he cannot bless us. It said in Isaiah 59, chapter verse 1, he said, Behold, the Lord's hands is not too short that it cannot reach, and his ears not too dull that it cannot hear, but your iniquity is separated between you and your God that he will not hear. Right. Tie his hands. Right. Amen. Amen? Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. Now, sometimes we don't give because it's us then sometimes it's the enemy who don't want us to give because he don't want God to bless. Amen. John 10 and 10. He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's all he come. Come to keep you from getting blessed. 
But Jesus turns around and said, but I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And if you do like I ask you to do, you'll untie my hands and I'll pull you out of blessing. Oh, so much. Amen? Are you with me? Are you with me? Second Samuel, the 24th chapter, we, we, we know that King David went over and he's going to offer up something for the Lord. And he comes to Aronah's threshing floor and he says, I want to buy your threshing floor. Aronah said, no, king, you, you can just use it. And David said this, listen, verse 24. And the king said unto Aronah, no, 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 no. But I will surely buy it of thee at a price, neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does what? Cost me nothing. Let me tell you, serving God comes with a cost, but let me tell you, it's a wonderful payday when he pays back. Amen? Huh? Can we count the cost? Can we do it? So David bought the threshing floor. And David, it said of David, he was a man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. In other words, he said, I'm willing to pay the price for my God. Nothing is too good for my God. Amen. Amen. We either believe the word of God or we don't. He said in Jeremiah in the 17th chapter in verse number five, he says, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departed from the Lord. He shall, he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh. Some people can't see any good anywhere because they're cursed. They're walking around with a cloud over their head. But shall inhabit the parched places of the wilderness and the salt land not inhibited. We understand that. That's what they want. Who wants it? I don't want it. Verse 7, it said, blessed. Everybody shout blessed. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, that does what God says, that follows his word, whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, blessed, that spreadeth out his roots by the river, blessed, shall not see when heat cometh, blessed, but her her leaf shall be green, blessed, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, blessed. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit, blessed, blessed, blessed. What a contrast of someone who is not a giver and someone who is a giver. Someone that ties God's hand and someone that loosens God's hand. Are you with me? God's good all the time. Let's go back to Malachi. Malachi, the third chapter, verse 10. The only place in the entire Bible where God said, try me, test me, just, just try it out. In fact, I'll do a challenge for you. We keep good records here. As long as you don't, if you put cash in there and don't give us a how much amount, I can't keep no record of that. I don't know who put it in. <laughs> you know, that's well and good. You ain't got to do that. That's fine. Some people do that. And that's, that's great. If you don't need it for your tax purposes, that's fine. Just you and God knows. But if you put in the offering for three months, three months, faithful tithing, tithe means tenth, 10%, ten tithing an offering plate, okay? For three months. And in that three months, you come to me and say, Brother Whitfield said, I don't, it didn't work out. That Malachi there is not right. Said, it just cost me what I put in. I didn't get nothing back in return. If you'll do three months, we keep it, I'll give you every penny of it back. Now, at the end of the year, I won't give you a statement you gave that, but I'll give you every penny of it back. Amen? That's how much I want you to try God. That's how much I want. How many knows that God blesses what you give? Not just monetary, but your, your labor of love and reaching out and witnessing everything you do, the cleaning of the building or the cutting of the grass and uh, any repairs you make and the things you do extra. God, he's awesome. He said in Malachi in the third chapter, verse 10, bring ye a double L, the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me, check me out, try me. 
Now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, wow, <laughs> oh, wow, and pour you out a blessing, not blessings, you're either blessed or you're not, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. That's why David said, my cup overflows. Yes. Verse 11, and because you did it, because you'll start doing it right now, on TV, you know, if you, I'm going to say this here, right here, but and, if you'll buy right now, I'm going to say this. It says, and, and, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall, you know, I asked the Lord one time, I read and I said, Lord, I don't have no crops in the ground. I, and most people don't, you know, a few of you might have some. I know Brother Woody does and Glenn back there grows a few things. And I said, most, most of the church people now, we go to Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> we don't have crops in the ground. I said, how does that affect us here? And he spoke back to me and he said, interest is a devourer that's destroying my people. Interest. You paying a lot of interest, you need to come talk to me a little bit. Amen. We got some strategies. You can save you a lot of money. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Amen. Yes, young people say, well, they go buy something big and they say, how, how much How much that cost you? Oh, ain't but a thousand fifty dollars a month. I said, no, no. I said, how much is it costing you? That's a thousand fifty dollars a month. I said, no. How much are you paying for that whole thing? Well, I, I don't know. We sat down and we and we figured up with all the interest and fees, and he said, I'm paying that much for that. That ain't a deal after all. I said, no. I said, interest is like taking money and sticking a match to it. You get nothing for it. In fact, interest is a price a poor man pays for being poor. I'm not cutting now. I've paid interest before, but I've got a little smarter through the years. These gray hairs mean something. <laughs> Amen? I woke up, but it wasn't yesterday. Amen. I was born, I guess is what I should say, but it wasn't yesterday. I was born, but it wasn't yesterday. Listen. So interest is a devourer. That's one way. It's all kind of things. My dad, told, uh, when we first got saved, he had, that's, my dad was a preacher all my life. That's why I'm so mean. I had to play with a preacher's kids. But, but anyhow, he asked, asked me, he said, are y'all tithing? And I said, uh, I said, well, yeah. You know how you humble a little bit? And he said, you need to, you need to give your tithe. And so we started doing that, you know. He said, when you tithe, your shoes last a little longer. Tires on your car seem to go a little further. You go in the store and you kind of like led by the Spirit over to the, you start to get this and the Spirit leads you. Oh, it's a better deal right here, you know. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. I mean, Sister Betty going there in that store with her pocket bill with them $2. Oh, she'd come out with an armful. Got to love her. <laughs> Verse 12, what's that first word? Amen. Conjunction, it ties, it, to, it ties 12 to 11 and 10, all tied together. Amen. And, and all nations shall call you what? Shout it. For yes. so ye shall be a delightsome land. Boy, people say, whoa, look at them church people. Look at that preacher. Boy, that must be paying him good. No, God does. God has blessed me. Amen. Let me tell you, God has blessed me. Amen. Look at what I said. God has blessed me. God has blessed me. Hallelujah. I remember before I left the aluminum plant out there, I told Sister Connie, I said, uh, I don't want to leave until we're debt free. And I was in the late 90s and I said I'm, not, I'm just telling you what God can do I'm just telling you what God can do well his parents must have been rich <laughs> yeah right <laughs> my dad 
Mom died. I went over to the house. I told my sister, I said, you took good care of Mom and Dad. They had a, they had a little small double wide out beside my sister's house and a couple of cars there. I said, I don't, want, I don't need to know how much they had in the bank. I mean, I know, the, I know Carter got them with the Social Security in the notch years, docked them $100 a month on their check. I think Mama might have got $300 and Daddy might have got six or $700 a month. Social Security. I said, I don't want to care what's in the bank. I don't want to even know. I said, you can have everything that's in there. You can have the house. You can have the cars. I said, I, I, I'd, I'd like a couple of his Bibles in there. Let me go in and get me what I want of his Bibles. That means more than anything to me. Before I left the plant out there, we were debt free. I didn't want somebody to come along and see how God has blessed me and say, hey, look how the church has kept you up. No. No, that's not the case. Amen? I appreciate what you give, but that's not the case. And all nations shall call you blessed. Boy, them church people are blessed. Now, 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 if you got co-workers and they see you in poverty and begging and, and walking around and say, oh, I'm just struggling from week to week. I'm getting barely getting by, you know, and, and I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to make it. And uh, You won't come to church with me. I don't think so. Amen? I know that having possessions is not the measure of a man. I know that as much as every one of you in here. I'm not saying, I'm trying to get us all to understand that our blessings come from above. But so often we're like the hog that sits all day long eating acorns and never one time look up to see where it's coming from. Let me tell you, we're so blessed. We need to stop every once in a while and raise our hand and say, God, I am so blessed by you and it's you that has given me everything I have and I'm amazed of how good you are to me. It said in Psalms 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing, know ye not that it's the Lord God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. It is him that has set us all up. We understand that. Hallelujah. Those coming in this morning. He says in Psalms, first chapter, verse one, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't, hang, don't walk in their, their instructions of the world, but follow the, the Lord. Let him lead your life. Let him help you with decisions, and you're gonna be blessed. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel or the instructions of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of the sinners. You ain't hanging around the, the honky talks no more and where you used to hang around nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law does he meditate day and night and conjunction he shall be like a tree planted by the river waters that bringeth forth his fruit and his season his leaf that's blessed his leaf also shall not wither. It's blessed. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. Too blessed to be stressed. Too blessed to be depressed. Too blessed to be a mess. And God good. You know, I remember back years ago, Sister Betty right here, Sister Mary, Sister Vanessa, here where she's at. Brother Carlisle used to say, oh, he's going to be with the Lord now. They worked at Brightline. Out there on the other side of Somerville. And they had, a, they had a fire. They had a fire. They shut the plant down. Big fire. Shut it down. Oh, you would think the enemy come around the bed and said, what are you going to do now? Come to Mary. What are you going to do now? Look at Vanessa. What are you going to do now? Everything's shut down. You know what they did? They just kept coming to church. <laughs> about a week later, about a week later, 
they came in with big old smiles on their face and said, we're working. Man, they're about to work us today. We're getting overtime. All the ones that was part of this church here, it wasn't because they was part of this church. Let me tell you what it was. They was tithers, every one of them. I know. I see the books. They was tithers. And every one of them, all the others got laid off. But they was about to work them to death over time. Yes. Amen? 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 Amen. Woo, how good God is. Like the preacher went to the barber shop and he was sitting in the barber's chair and the barber cutting his hair and he told the preacher, well, there ain't no God, can't be no God. He said, all the problems people has on this world and all the things going on and People bound with drugs and alcohol and families falling apart. Said, can't be no God. Preacher just sat there and took it a few minutes. And the guy walked down the picture window and had hair down right along here. And the preacher said, it must not be a decent barber in this town. He said, what you talking about? He said, that guy wouldn't be walking down the street like that right there in that mess. He said, well, well, I can't do nothing about it unless he comes in here. Exactly my point. Except they come to the Lord. God can't do nothing about it uh, until you begin to obey the Lord and do what God said. Uh, you tie his hands. But if you'll unloose him, he'll bless you. In closing, Deuteronomy 30 and 19. He said, I call heaven and earth to record this day. We're witnessing here one another. It's being recorded in our mind and it's being recorded in heaven. This service is against you that I have set before you life and death. There's only two choices in life. Only two roads, heaven and hell. Straight and narrow. Broad road. Straight and narrow and the broad road. Blessing and cursing. And then he said, choose life and blessing. Gives us a little hint that both thou and thy seed. I'm telling you, I look at some of you families, not only you're blessed, but your children are blessed. It runs over out of you over into them. Amen, Brother Donald? Look, look down your pew there, brother. I can see it. I look how Sister Connie and I have, have from a pretty young age, early 30s, been serving the Lord. 37 years pastored here at this place. No doubt, Brother Edward sacrificed a lot like you and others have in this building for the Lord. But I look at my daughter and how that God has blessed her and her her family. My granddaughter sitting up on the piano. She's going to get on the bass in a minute as soon as I shut up. <laughs> I look at my son over here. How he's blessed. He's running over. <laughs> how can anyone not serve the Lord? At least try him. Just try him. I don't know what you need this morning. The choice is yours today. If you need a change in your life, in your family, in your just everything about you, it's up to you. You need to come and get it this morning. It starts right now today in this building. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Forget the past. Forget everything you did or did not do. Let's start right here this morning it's up to you and I'm going to ask you to stand just a moment when you do just keep that momentum and come on don't stop don't stop in a spot just move on out and just trust God would you here we go on three one two three stand up all over